Hello for those of us of you, of you are joining us. Um, thank you. We just have some introductory slides that, about upcoming events we are projecting right now. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful fall day. Hello, thanks for doing so if you who are joining us. We'll get started in just a couple of minutes. I'm just waiting for more attendees to join. If not, we'll get started. Uh, meantime, we are um, communicating to you upcoming events. We can see your screens. Okay, um, welcome everyone. Um, it's uh, 4.35, um, thanks for joining us virtually on a beautiful fall um, uh, day here in Northeast Ohio. Um, so we will try our best not to keep you beyond 5.30. So um, maybe you're just waiting for others to join. I think we have a sizable audience. So thank you again for joining us virtually. Um, 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 this, I am Anand Natarajan, Energy Manager, Mayor's Office of Sustainability, City of Cleveland. And with me, we have Elizabeth Lehman, or TP, uh, Energy Analyst for the Mayor's Office of Sustainability, City of Cleveland. Um, so some housekeeping rules that we would want to go through. Um, this, uh, this presentation is being recorded and will be shared. 
Um, let me see if we can advance to the next one, if possible. Um, and we are asking everyone to go on mute during the presentation. Uh, use the chat box to put in your questions and comments. We certainly welcome a lot of questions and comments. Um, just uh, remain muted during the presentation, and we will accommodate questions at the end of the presentation. Again, um, I'm Anand Natarajan, Energy Manager, and with me we have Elizabeth Lehman. Uh, so um, this is the third um, in the um, installment in our monthly series that we've been doing this this year, and we are very happy to present this and be able to provide um, outreach and, and um, education about various things we do in our Office of Sustainability. And if you go to the next slide. Um, so this series, uh, this installment, the month of September, is focused on energy and energy awareness uh, from an energy and a sustainability perspective. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Elizabeth and Libby Lehman to continue with the rest of the presentation. Um, again, uh, please do continue to provide your questions. We will be monitoring the chat box, and uh, certainly we will try to address as much as possible at the end of the presentation. Thank you. Okay, um, great. So thanks again, everyone, for joining. Um, my name is uh, Elizabeth Lehman. Uh, sometimes I also go by Libby. Um, but I work closely with Anand, um, and I'm just going to get it started off here. Um, all right, one second. Okay, so I, I wanted to start things off with um, kind of some basics about energy, um, especially within the context of sustainability. So I'm going to go through a couple definitions um, that are probably going to be a little bit of a throwback to your high school physics class, um, but then talk a little bit more specifically about how we think about energy. Um, in our day to day, um, and also when you hear you know the term energy, whether it's in this webinar or other sustainability webinars that um, you know you you'll attend, you kind of understand what what we're talking about and what what we're referencing whenever we um, whenever we're talking about about energy. Um, so in its purest definition, um, energy is the ability to do work. Um, and so it can be as simple as pushing your pencil across your desk um, or something more complex um, as, you know, fuel that's being burned that heats water and gives off steam and turns a turbine and, and generates electricity. So, um, you know, whether it's, again, at the most simple or the most complex um, forms, anything that is is causing work to be done or a movement of an object by a force is, is energy um, and requires energy. Um, it's kind of split into two main categories. Um, there's potential energy, which is um, includes chemical, mechanical, nuclear, gravitational, or kinetic energy, um, which is energy of movement. So it's radiant, thermal, motion, sound, electrical. Um, and so work, the work that is done by energy is, is it happens when energy transfers from one form to another. So um, in this first picture in our slide, um, you know, if you eat an apple, um, the, there's potential chemical en energy in the nutrients of that apple that gets transferred to your body that allows your muscles to move and power this mechanical machine, a bike, and you are moving forward, um, causing by that force. Um, or like I have in this other image, um, you know, this is a picture of a boiler and kind of in the first example that I gave um, where fuel is being burned and, um, you know, there's a much more complex complex system there. Um, that's kind of another example of, of work that's being done. Um, so within sustainability, you know, we really focus on um, energy that goes into the heating, cooling, um, lighting, uh, charging, uh, running appliances, equipment, transportation, um, all, all of these ways that things that kind of help us to, to live our lives, um, all of that requires energy. Um, and we really talk about energy and sustainability in, in terms of, of those actions. Um, so, Again, with, within sustainability, one thing that we, we really look at is, is how to reduce our, the amount of energy that we're using. Um, so as energy is expended, that 
that requires resources. So when, when a light is turned on in a room, you know, that, that, that just doesn't just happen and come out of nowhere. Uh, that energy that is being expended from the light bulb, you know, that's, that's generated further up the line at, uh, you know, a, a power plant or a solar panel, all of that is coming from somewhere um, and requires resources. And so we really want to think about how we're able to reduce the amount of energy that we use. And that kind of happens through two main channels um, and that can be energy conservation. Um, and that means doing things that require or that allow us to just use less energy. So whenever I walk out of a room, um, making sure that you're turning off the lights, uh, that's an example of energy conservation. Um, on the other side uh, is energy efficiency, and that's employing technology that requires less energy to perform the same function. And so that can be if I'm replacing my incandescent light bulb with an LED bulb, um, that's a much more efficient use of energy. You can that the same amount of, of energy is used and can go farther. Um, and so that's an example of energy efficiency. Um, so within sustainability, we really look at as many opportunities as possible to employ these two methods of, of using less energy. Um, then we also consider uh, renewable versus non-renewable energy. Uh, so traditionally, a lot of our sources from energy come from non-renewable sources. And so that's fossil fuels, um, you know, coal that our, a lot of our power plants burns. Those are all non-renewable sources. So things that have a finite supply. Um, if we're able to switch a lot of our sources to renewable, uh, such as, you know, beautiful afternoon like today, with a lot of solar energy, we can use that, wind. Um, it's it's a, a, another way that, you know, we're promoting sustainability through, through energy. So I want to talk a little bit now about, now that we kind of have the basic definitions um, behind us, uh, about how we at the city um, employ energy management and um, again, use energy efficiency and energy conservation measures um, across our, our city operations. So this slide shows a map of all of the city-owned properties. Uh, so there's a little under 200. Um, these are fire stations, parks, rec centers, uh, water treatment plants, pumping stations. Um, all of these properties are owned by the city. Um, they are using energy through natural gas, through um, steam for, for heating, chilled water for cooling. Uh, they've got, you know, lights, whether it's lights in an office building or street lights. So they're using electric. Um, they also employ city employees that are um, using city fleets, so through gasoline or the diesel fuel that um, snowplow trucks use, um, and they're also, you know, using water and sewer. Um, and so through our energy management software, we track all of these different utilities, um, and because it's, it's difficult to be able to understand conservation and efficiency measures without without data. Um, so whether that's baselining and understanding how much energy a single building is using or understanding how an energy efficiency project has been able to reduce energy usage at a single building, um, that, that background of data is, is really important. And so through the utility bills um, or an inf information from other departments, we're able to aggregate all of this data across city facilities and, you know, really have accurate snapshots of what the city's energy use is. Um, and through that data, uh, we're able to uh, report out on that through a couple different, um, a couple different measures. There's a couple of international and national programs that we report our data up to. So, um, there's definitely some accountability there. Um, we we work with the 
U.S. Department of Energy, and they have a better build, what's called a better building challenge, um, where they look at the energy use per square foot um, of individual buildings and help entities like the city of Cleveland um, to set goals in order to reduce that energy use intensity or energy use per square foot. Um, and so we report this data up to them uh, so that it can be um, included with their you know, nationwide reports um, and kind of broadcast it out on their website. Uh, there's an international program called the Carbon Disclosure Project that we report data back to um, to really help understand the city's greenhouse gas emissions. Um, within, the pro within the city, um, we use this data for ongoing city operations. Um, so it, it allows us to do things like detect leaks. So if we see a spike in natural gas consumption at a building that seems unusual, we're able to, to target that um, and you know, prevent a waste of that utility or wasted cost if there's, if there's an issue that we need, we need to address. Um, we're also, like I mentioned, able to track successes of energy efficiency projects. Um, so the city has been uh, working, have, has an ongoing project to replace street lights with LEDs, and, and we're able to really see the energy, the, the decrease in energy consumption through projects like that. And, and by showing that, that savings, um, we can support future efficiency projects. And then we also use it um, alongside the city's Office of Capital Projects. Um, so as renovations are happening and new buildings are being built, we really rely on this data to ensure that energy efficiency can be part of, of those new projects. And so if that we're rep replacing uh, a cooling system in a building, you know, we, we look to try to replace some of that equipment with energy efficiency, um, energy efficient equipment. So, so we use this data in, in a handful of different ways. And then um, Anu is gonna talk a little bit more about some more specific um, renewable energy and energy efficient projects that, that the city is, is employing. Thank you, David. That was a great segue. Um, so yes, very briefly, just want to talk about a few projects and certainly want to devote a lot of time to resources that are available to community, especially around uh, uh, for the residential sector. But yeah, that was a great segue. So just to, to add to what Libby had mentioned, um, the city spends with city operations about $57 million on annual utility spend, including track water and sewage. So that's a lot of money. Right. So and then we've been uh, tracking very diligently all the way from 2010, and we've actually seen uh, approximately $2.7 million in savings in 2018 compared to 2010. So 2010 is our baseline year, and uh, you know that baseline year would come up a few times. So I just want to make sure that you know we understand that we have to have a baseline year against which we want to measure. So um, that, and that's that's pretty significant. That is what is called as avoided cost. What it means is uh, you know you would be spending that much more. Um, uh, we would be spending that much more had, had we not done some of these measures that Libby had mentioned, including energy efficiency. And in some cases, it's just a question of right-sizing uh, the facilities too. So if some facilities that are not occupied, you know, then there's no point. We ensure that also we, have, uh, we stay diligent in uh, shutting down the utilities. Trust me, that doesn't happen very quickly uh, in some cases. Um, I see a lot of uh, questions coming in. Keep them coming. We will certainly come back to them at the end of the presentation. Uh, just a few other things that I want to highlight very quickly is um, uh, Libby had mentioned about what is called as the Better Buildings Challenge. We try to be as transparent as possible. So as of 2019, we've seen about 11% uh, reduction in our energy use intensity, which is uh, energy by square feet. Um, again, for about 4.5 million square feet that we've reported, that is a lot more that the city owns and operates, but that was a minimum threshold we met. And we pretty, you know, we have a ways to go, but that is a pretty significant milestone we had. Um, and then uh, moving on to the next slide, um, I think Libby briefly mentioned about, um, maybe if we can advance to the next slide. Uh, yes, uh, 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 yeah, Libby mentioned about the, the one of the largest projects that is happening in the city of Cleveland, um, primarily led by Cleveland Public Power. And in conjunction with the Department of Safety and other departments in the city, it pretty much touches every neighborhood, right? So I'm sure that you've, at least if not, if it has not touched your neighborhood yet, if you live in the city, it will. 
Um, so as you can see, progress is being tracked. Uh, about you know 73% of the overall project is uh, completed. About 61,000 streetlights to be, which is significant. All streetlights uh, to be uh, replaced by uh, LEDs by the end of the year, and you can see the conversion. And also, what is more important is the light quality the safety, and we are getting uh, good positive feedback from the uh, community and residents. As you can see, that is also a before and after. Um, what is neat about uh, what CPP is doing is you can track the progress online by ward. Uh, pretty much every ward has been touched, uh, and it's just a matter of now completion in the rest of the ward. Um, and again, obviously, from an energy perspective, it has a um, significant impact, and we expect to see a lot of energy savings by the time we end up at 2020. Uh, that will take us to our you know, 2020 goals that uh, DB had alluded to. Um, so that is uh, also not just from an energy perspective, but as you can see, it's important from a safety uh, and uh, just overall efficacy in terms of uh, lighting in the neighborhood. Maybe if you can advance to the next slide. Um, so I'm just going to step uh, up briefly, you know, going one step higher to the larger C in terms of climate action plan. Many of you on this uh, panel and, uh, and attending today might uh, be aware that the city of Cleveland had uh, uh, first launched the Climate Action Plan in 2013. And then in 2017, when the, the U.S. Um, you know, had actually withdrawn from the Paris Climate Accord, it became even more obvious that cities and states and uh, communities have to continue uh, their work on climate action. So in 2018, the city of Cleveland um, updated the Climate Action Plan and uh, released it in 2018, with again some updates also that included the social equity, equity and vulnerability and other cross-cutting priorities. Um, so the, some of the salient goals in the Climate Action Plan are, uh, if you're familiar with greenhouse gas reductions, uh, calls for a goal of 16% by 2020, 40% by 2030, and 80% by 2050. And I will talk more about the uh, one highlight that is mentioned here. But it's also uh, interesting to note that we are tracking progress, and we have about 9% savings in our greenhouse gases as we've tracked as of 2018. Uh, what is the equally important is we are seeing what is called as a decoupling. What it means is that the economy improved, or at least after 2018, um, you know, 2020 is going to be an outlier, right? I mean, so as of 2018, we are seeing an increase in the economy uh, in terms of GDP, but a reduction in emissions, which is how we want to be. Um, let me go to the next slide. So just a, a very briefly, because this is around energy, right? I mean, there are a lot of things that have contributed and we still have ways to go, but we are tracking uh, clean energy growth in the city of Cleveland. Um, across, as you know, some of you might be aware, we have two electrical utilities, right? Just to make things interesting in the city, we have Cleveland Public Power and First Energy. Uh, so we do our best in order to track uh, data coming from the grid and also what uh, Cleveland Public Power uh, purchases, plus what uh, we also are, um, you know, do manage a program called uh, municipal aggregation, which is a community choice aggregation that's run through NOPEC, uh, about 45,000 customers in the city of Cleveland. Uh, with 100% renewables uh, as a default opt-out. All of that, and including, of course, our partners, such as the Cuyahoga County, uh, the solar co-op program, is certainly continuing to make a dent and, uh, you know, an upward trajectory in terms of our overall percentage in terms of our electricity consumption uh, from renewables. Uh, we also are doing a, quite a few other things within the city. We have an on-site solar RFP that is in very close to being, uh, you know, make a final decision on. Plus, the city of Cleveland is also what is called a Soul Smart Bronze certified. Um, yeah, um, so we, we are doing some progress, but there is more to be done. Uh, Libby, if you can advance to the next slide. So 100% um, renewable electricity. Uh, Libby, if you can advance to the next slide. Um, one of the um, uh, major uh, goals of the updated climate action plan, which uh, Mayor Frank Jackson had committed to the city, is to procure or uh, get 100% clean and renewable electricity for all of city of Cleveland's consumption by 2050. Uh, it's what I would call as a big area or she's goal. But uh, and, and the city of Cleveland was the first city, believe it or not, in Ohio to have committed to that goal, uh, powering itself with 100% clean and renewable energy. So it's not just the city of Cleveland operations, but the entire city. Um, and uh, I, this is becoming more and more popular and common now. As you can see, 150 plus cities have uh, committed to such targets. And so uh, we are one among them. Um, again, this is just a teaser slide. I also want to make sure that I'm also doing a pitch for next month's presentation, which will be primarily focused on the 100% renewable electricity plan. So stay tuned. Plus, we have our annual summit coming up, so there's a lot more discussion that's going to happen. Uh, but this is just to provide you a preview about you know what we want to discuss in more detail about the 100% renewable energy plan. Okay, over to you, Libby.
Libby, you might still be on mute. Libby, your mic is mute. Um, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Um, I'm just trying to, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, as Anid had mentioned, that was kind of a little bit of background about what we're doing here in the city, uh, both on kind of a day-to-day -day basis, um, as well as a, a project basis. Um, but really, we wanted to make sure that we uh, really focused and, and spent a lot of time on um, kind of tips, resources, and programs that are available um, to to you all from you know, as a resident of the city, um, and what what you can do to both reduce your energy footprint as well as um, take advantage of some of the programs that exist to reduce uh, your utility bills. Um, so what we put here um, just a a handful of um, tips that um, you can do and practice oops, um, at your house and uh, to to help to reduce your your energy load. Um, so the first of these and, and maybe the thing that we think about uh, right away as pretty low hanging fruit is turning off lights when you're when you're not using them. Um, I know even for myself as you know I work in energy and I, I think about this you know, all day, and I still have to remind, remind myself whenever I leave a room to make sure, you know, I turn off the lights. Um, and kind of above and beyond that, you know, if you are able to utilize natural lighting, uh, especially now if while we're working from home and, and throughout the day, um, especially while we while we still have it here, um, you know, utilize the, the sunlight coming through your windows and, and opt for that as opposed to turning your lights on. Um, also specific task lighting so instead of turning on overhead lights think about getting a small desk lamp um, anything that you're able to you know use a, a smaller wattage uh, less power that can help to, to lower again both both your consumption and your uh, your utility bill cost um, the other thing that we recommend a lot in our uh, across our office is utilizing power strips um, it's really good to to unplug um, devices when they're when they're not being in use, and a power strip makes that really easy. Uh, you can plug everything into one spot and then just turn the strip off whenever uh, whenever you're not using it. Uh, thermostats, we really recommend getting smart a smart thermostat if um, if that's available to you. So that way you can set it so you're optimizing the temperature in your house. So that way if you're not home during the day. You're not, you know, running your heat at full blast. Um, if you're, you know, asleep at night and you can, you can drop the temperature down there. Um, so just being aware of, of what your temp, what the temperature in your home is set at, especially when, when you're not at home. Um, it's, it's an easy way to uh, again, lower, lower your gas bill, um, use, use less natural gas. Similarly, turning off fans and, and uh, air conditioning units when not in when you're not home when they're not in use. Um, one thing that maybe we don't necessarily think about is uh, we've really been talking about um, utility bills in terms of electric and natural gas, but on the water side, you know, it, it it takes energy at the the water plant to pump water to your house. So thinking about taking shorter showers, uh, using cooler water whenever possible. So uh, washing your clothes in, in cool water. So that way you're not having to, um, you know, refill your hot water tank as often. Um, another thing that we're kind of getting out of the season of, but that I always, um, I, I re recommend highly is uh, using a clothesline to dry your clothes um, as much as possible. So that way you're, you're not having to run your, your clothes dryer. Um, so they're all just kind of some basic tips um, that, that we recommend that you know really can make a difference. It might seem like a small thing, but um, you know if everyone is lowering their thermostat, you know by a couple degrees across the board, that can have a big impact. And, and you know again, outside that it can lower your costs that it, that you see in your utility bills. Um, but it's also if you if you think a little bit bigger picture, um, 
you know, by not having your, your lights turn on, that's electricity that isn't having to be supplied by the power industry. And so that means that's, you know, that's coal that isn't being burnt to, to turn on your lights. Um, so I think it's, it's important to, to think, you know, even beyond our, like the box of our house that we live in and, and understand where all that energy is coming from and what the, the cost is, you know, not only to our own wallets, but to, to the whole planet as well. All right, so then the last thing that we were uh, really want to spend some time on is uh, touching on some energy and utility assistant programs that are available um, to, to all of us, in, in specifically in this area. Um, and so this first slide, um, this is specific for, um, for residents who are on a, a lower income. So they're um, like low to moderate income programs. Um, the first one is called the Home Energy Assistance Program, um, or also known as HEAP. And it is uh, a one-time benefit that is applied to your bill once during summer and, and once during the winter that can be applied to both your electric and natural gas bill. Um, that it basically helps to make helps make your your utility bills more more affordable. Um, and one thing that I want to note for the the summer crisis period uh, that is ending um, on September 30th, uh, and so we'll provide all the contact information and kind of what the steps are. But um, it's important that if you're applying for that kind of this one time benefit um, for the summer to cover help with your electric bills, um, the application deadline is. September 30th, and then for the winter crisis, which again is is a, a one-time payment um, for both electric and natural gas, um, that application period starts November 1st. And then the, the second program, uh, and these are both actually um, statewide programs, um, but they're administered locally. Um, but this is called the Percentage of Income Payment Plan, um, and it is basically a plan that helps to reduce the required payment that um, you as an individual have to pay for your electric and natural gas. Um, and so that how that works is, is basically once you um, verify your income through this program, uh, you, qual you can qualify for a, um, a, a, bit, a, lower, a lower bill cost. And what that, it ends up being 6% of um, your, your household income or $10 um, if you have both electric and natural gas on a monthly basis. So again, just kind of helping with a, to make your utility bills more affordable on an ongoing basis. Um, another good benefit of the PIP plan, the, the payment plan, is that as, as you're making payments on time, um, it can help to forgive past due amounts that you have with utility companies. Um, so if individuals find themselves where you know, they have a big past due balance um, and, you know, it, it can make it really hard to kind of ever overcome that. And so this is a program to help, you know, set it up so it's sustainable uh, on an ongoing basis and then also um, help to remove some of that, that debt from utility. Um, there are also a couple programs that are available on the water and sewer side. Um, so there's the, the water affordability, um, and this is available only to homeowners. Uh, the HEAP and the PIT plans are available for either homeowners or to renters. Um, the water and sewer programs are just available for homeowners. But the, the water affordability is it basically, it, it's offered through um, Cleveland Water, and it can offer up to a $140 monthly discount on, on your water and sewer bills. Uh, so again, you, there's a, a process to verify your income levels, and then you can apply for, for this program. Um, the sewer crisis program that's offered through the sewer district, um, and this can offer a credit, a one-time credit of $300 towards your sewer bill. Um, and then the, the last one that uh, we wanted to comment on is, is the homestead discount. And um, again, this is offered through Cleveland Water and it's available for um, customers who are 65 years or older or permanently disabled um, with an income at or below their set guidelines. 
and it's uh, basically just a, a lower rate structure for your water bills. And um, all of these programs are, um, a, like I said, whether they're offered through the, um, the state or through a specific utility company, um, they are administered through a couple different local organizations. Um, the first is Cleveland Housing Partners. Um, and the second is the Council for Economic Opportunities in Greater Cleveland. Um, and we'll provide all of the, the information to get more, um, you know, specifically how to apply, what numbers to call. Um, but again, they're kind of the, the holding house for um, all, all of these different programs and, and they can kind of help to administer any programs that, that you apply for. Um, so then we also wanna talk a little bit about some programs that are available specifically for energy efficiency and, and to make, make your home more energy efficient. Uh, so again, there's, we have it split up into two groups. So the first on the left here, um, again, is available to income eligible renters and homeowners. Um, so it's um, at or below um, a certain percentage of the federal poverty limit. And they offer um, a handful of different services. Um, and basically, what a lot of it is, is energy efficiency, so your utility bills are lower, as well as weatherization to make sure that, you know, across the board, people have a, a safe, comfortable home to live in. Um, and so this can include insulation, um, air leakage reduction, heating system repairs and replacements, um, health and safety inspections, LED bulb installations, or Energy Star refrigeration replacements. Um, on the other side, then we also have, um, there's a handful of projects that, or programs that are available to anyone who is a customer of that utility. Um, and so Dominion and Columbia Gas, they both offer um, a couple different things to, to their customers. Um, they, you can do, you can get a home audit where someone will come out to your house and kind of walk through and identify things that um, that you can do and equipment that you can replace or, or small operational changes that you can make to help reduce your your energy usage, um, your, specifically your natural gas usage. Um, and it's basically how they do that is, is you can get the home audit done for um, either $25 or $50. Um, and then through that, you can get discounts on um, a lot of other equipment. So whether it's LED light bulbs, um, programmable thermostats, efficient shower heads, or rebates on different energy efficient appliances. So it can be a refrigerator, a dishwasher, washer dryer. Um, they, they offer a certain amount of, of rebates for, for those, those things. Um, they also um, offer, and, and Cleveland Public Power has this as well, but um, platforms to kind of that you can pull up online your energy usage and really understand and and track your trend over time um, and understand what you can do to to help reduce your your electric use. Uh, so this is you know, something similar that we as the city do um, kind of on a, a a large scale across all our facilities. There's resources out there that you can do that at home as well. Um, so Cleveland Public Power offers a platform called Brilliancy through my CPP, um, and through that you can, um, you know, understand how you're using your electric and and what that looks like from month to month. Um, and then NOPEC, um, as Anand had talked about a little bit, the um, Northeast Ohio Public Energy Council. Um, they also, if you're a customer through them, they have different energy efficiency tips, maintenance reminders that you can set up. Um, so again, just an online platform for a handful of different resources. And so as I mentioned, this is kind of the, the landing page for all of the contact information. So um, as we get into questions here, um, I'm gonna leave this page open so if you you know want to copy down any information um, as I mentioned the CHN housing partners um, they are a, really a great resource for a lot of these different programs 
Um, so you can apply for the different income eligible programs through them. They'll, they'll help with the application. They will help administer the, the credits and, and the, the discounts and everything. Um, they do, you know, whether it's uh, the energy efficiency or the utility bill assistance, uh, they can help with all that. And they have a handful of other resources as well. Um, similarly with the Council for Economic Opportunities, um, the Cleveland Department of Aging, they also have a um, energy assistant administer and so in, administrator. And <clears throat> so if there's, you know, if it's a homestead program or if you're curious about, you know, other resources that are out there, um, especially for some of our older residents, they're, they're a really great resource as well. Um, then I, we've also included kind of contact phone numbers and websites for NOPEC, um, Dominion, and Cleveland Public Power as well. And so I think with that, we will, uh, we have a little over 15 minutes um, that we wanted to make sure that we left, you know, plenty of time for questions. And I know I can't see them, but so I'll turn it back over to Anand mm -hmm. for the question portion. Thank you. Um, um, yeah. I've got one question. Yeah. that's come right, in sure. if you're ready for it. Um, how can customers on these assistant programs have 100% clean energy as their source of energy? So um, uh, we can take that and then also try to follow up if needed with more detail. Um, so one thing that I, we would uh, try to argue about, right? I mean, so yes, we did, we've not had a concerted effort at this point uh, so far, but what we are doing through our 100% renewable electricity plan uh, which is a uh, work in progress, right? We just um, we started it this year with uh, with full intent in order to ensure that um, clean energy and electricity is um, um, affordable and is also, uh, you know, is, is provided for all residents, not just a select few who can pay for it. Um, so more to come is, is what I would say, but certainly the intent is right is there and we are, we want to ensure that when we uh, develop the plan, it is as equitable as possible. Does that help? Does that address the question? Um, I can go through uh, other questions. I do see quite a few questions coming in through the chat window and some through the Q&A. Um, um, yeah, it, I've yeah. answered most of the Q&A ones. If you have specific yeah. ones in the chat, please answer yeah. those. Yeah. No, no problem. So yes, there are a few that in the, came through the chat. And uh, folks, uh, who are, you know, now is the time to also address your questions. Um, you know, we will be continuing to monitor them and answer them as best as possible within the session. Uh, if not, we will certainly follow up along with the video recording of this presentation too. Um, I do also want to make a plug for not only this presentation, but we are doing a lot. And again, I, I want to give a big shout out to the Office of Sustainability staff um, and especially Libby and the communications team and just doing a great job overall in terms of making uh, more uh, information available about energy. Um, so besides this presentation, uh, we are doing a weekly blog series on various topics of energy, um, basics of energy, these kinds of resources, you know, so stay tuned. There are more blogs to come out uh, this week and the following couple of weeks. And uh, that is one way that you can access them on our Sustainable Cleveland page uh, with a whole host of information that adds or complements whatever, um, you know, we presented today. And in addition, if you're being social, and I, I'm assuming many of you are, uh, do continue to follow us if you're not already followed followed us all along, shame on you, just kidding. But yeah, continue to follow us, uh, Sustainable Cleveland on both Facebook and Twitter. Um, you know, the communication staff, staff is just doing a fab job and providing a lot of updates, plus e-blasts, of course. So uh, just take in all those resources and continue to uh, follow us. We provide as much outreach information as we can. So with that, I'm just gonna turn out to, to some of the questions that uh, I got privately as host, and then also I think it was addressed to everybody. Um, yeah, so. One question that came in, yes, uh, maybe, maybe you may want to take this. Can you talk about the granularity of power monitoring data in city owned buildings, whole building, individual circuits, or individual equipment? Um, I will take a stab at this first, and maybe feel free to add anything else to it. So the question is, uh, I think it's about how we granular are we doing power monitoring in city buildings? Uh, for the most part, we are doing whole building. And in some cases where we are, uh, not monitoring energy, but we're monitoring equipment conditions. We are doing it at some of the equipment level where we have better control. 
of the equipment. So in newer buildings, as we, as we continue to construct or we do major modifications, we are putting in more controls in order to have better access to data at the equipment level. Um, Libby, let me know if you want to add anything to it. If not, I'll go to the next question. Yeah, uh, I, I think, I guess the only thing is, you know, for some of the um, properties that we have that are, are a little bit, you know, bigger campuses or, um, you know, there's, we, we do look at it mm -hmm. on kind of a per meter basis. And so, you know, mm -hmm. for example, um, the public auditorium and city hall, um, they use a, a steam and chilled water. And um, for, for that, we have, I think there's about six different steam meters. And so, you know, we are able to, if, if we see a spike at a specific meter, um, you know, we're able to kind of drill in and, and see exactly where that's happening. Um, and it, it helps to get, give a, a full picture on, on a building basis. Great. Um, so the one other question that came in was, uh, how much of the energy savings can be attributed to lighting upgrades? Um, I'm not sure if I understand, them, but I think overall, I think I'm assuming it's city operations and not about street lights. Um, so this is a tough one because we don't, uh, we, we have guesstimates. It's about like 30% or so, right? I mean, but we can certainly attribute a lot more energy savings to LED improvements uh, uh, than what we could in previous years. Uh, right, I mean, because obviously uh, LED based on what your current technology, you know, uh, existing fixtures are, you will see a lot more improvement in energy savings, 50% um, in terms of energy savings for lighting upgrades. Um, I'm hoping that addressed the question. If um, Aaron Feldman, if you're still online, if you want to just provide a chat or, you know, if you can unmute yourself, if you want to ask the question, clarify it, we're happy to try to address it anymore. Um, so from the LED street lights improvements, the uh, estimate is again about 40 to 50% of savings based on current street lights. Uh, again, Aaron, uh, if you are able to unmute or just if you want to add a follow up question, uh, feel free to do so. If not, I'm going to move on to the next. Okay, another question from Aaron. Um, Okay, how is the nuclear power plant bribery scheme impacting Cleveland sustainability actions? Um, I'm gonna provide my opinions here at this point. I would say that, uh, first of all, I think we're, you know, we are not, uh, we, we are not changing anything we're doing because of that. Um, you know, we're continuing to move on. We are, especially we have, we, you know, two electrical utilities in the city of Cleveland, right? One is a locally uh, owned and operated municipal power, public power. And so they continue to advance towards their uh, advance in renewable energy portfolios, which is 25% by 2025. Uh, we are happy to note that they're making significant progress. They're at least already at 21% of their uh, purchases are coming from advanced in renewable energy sources. Um, I mean, if any, we have to be diligent and watchful, uh, I guess, uh, in terms of how we advance uh, clean renewable energy. Uh, I think when we also are developing our 100% uh, renewable electricity plan, there is a lot of discussion already happening around um, the fact that it should be more from renewable sources and not just carbon free, right? There is a distinction between calling what is called as carbon free versus renewable. Um, Libby, let me know if you want to add anything to this question. If you have any inputs. Um, yeah, I, I don't think so. I think I guess the only thing is I, I believe that the city council had issued a statement um, maybe a couple mm. of weeks ago. They had. Um, uh, I don't know if it was, it was a special meeting or um, I'm not exactly sure. I know that they had a meeting yeah. that specifically focused around um, Hostel 6 and put out a statement uh, regarding yeah. it. So I, I would encourage you um, probably through their website, uh, you can find uh, information about about what they've stated as well. Great. Yes, and so certainly if I look up, um, City Council did put up a resolution, um, you know, asking for more in, in, uh, you know, in, into that, the whole House Bill 6. Um, so the next question uh, that uh, is, what is the current progress towards the 100% renewable energy plan? Uh, so as we had also uh, presented, we're already making progress and we want to continue to accelerate that. So as of 2018, based on what we were tracking uh, in terms of our electricity, if we include uh, so some of the renewable energy credits that we are purchasing through our aggregation, um, that we are, we are what is called as you know retirement on behalf of the city. We are already tracking at about 13% of the total electricity consumed in the city is coming from renewable resources from various mixes. Again, 
right? I mean, based on the grid, uh, we talked about based on local actions people are doing, uh, such as putting rooftop solar, uh, based on large purchases that Cleveland Public Power is doing and so forth. And so that's that. Um, and in addition, uh, you know, the 100% renewable electricity plan was kicked off in earnest this year. Um, and Kristen, I, I don't know if you want to talk any more about it now or we can provide some offline comments uh, separately, but I do want to also mention that there is a, hopefully a whole presentation that we're going to address just on this besides our, um, you know, some of our breakout topics at our annual sustainability summit. Awesome. Thank you for the plug on end. Um, yeah, I think yeah. that would be, uh, if you're interested in learning more, it's going to be a really great opportunity to find out kind of where we're headed. I mean, ultimately, it's a feasibility study. We recognize that to get to 100% renewable, it's mm -hmm. going to take a lot from a lot of different sectors. And we want to make sure that um, any work that we're doing isn't going to disproportionately impact any of our residents and ultimately reduce the energy burden. Um, so we are, that project is underway. We're working with a group called GreenLink Analytics. Uh, they helped produce a similar plan for the city of Atlanta. And, um, you know, after kind of seeing what the final product is there, I'm very excited about what we're going to have here in Cleveland. Um, ultimately, it's going to give us a few different pathways of how we get to that 100% renewable. So we mm -hmm. could very easily purchase uh, RECs, renewable energy credits, and get there, and we've met mm -hmm. our goal, but um, we're not going to see the local benefits um, or economic development, workforce building, et cetera, um, that we would from really supporting more local sources. So they're going to give us a few different scenarios that um, ultimately get us there, and then, um, you know, it'll be on us to work towards an implementation plan to actually make it happen. Um, it's tricky because we do have multiple u electric utilities here in the city, so there is some, some navigating that's going to have to happen um, as we do employ that, but uh, we're hopeful by early next year we'll have that feasibility study completed and uh, be ready to share more with with the public great thank you Kristen. appreciate it um, so yes I'm going to, go to the next question there is one request um, I know that we have some folks from the sewer district uh, Marie Fichek uh, there is one um, uh, attendee who had asked some information about uh, being able to contact sewer district and I'll try to connect you separately um, and then going to the next question there, there is a question from Aaron again. What is the limit for the utility bill assistance programs? Um, Aaron, I'm, I'm, if you can unmute yourself or if you want to just provide a follow-up question, I'm trying to understand the limit when you say in terms of dollars, in terms of uh, income. Uh, if that's the case, I'm going to try to have Libby uh, try to address that as best as possible. So the question is, Libby, what is the limit for the utility bill assistance programs? Um, I'm not sure if it's a certain percentage of the dollar amounts, but yeah, we'll do our best to answer this now. Um, it, it kind of varies, um, and so what I would recommend, um, again, as Anand had mentioned in our uh, follow-up to tonight's presentation, uh, we'll be emailing out the slides as well as a handful of other helpful links. Um, in the blog post that we wrote uh, last mm -hmm. week, you know, we really kind of summarized everything um, because it, it can get a little bit confusing from one one program to the next, and in that there um, is a table uh, that shows income levels. Um, I, I want to say for the most part, it's around 175% of the federal poverty level, um, but I, I'm gonna, I, want, I do want to refer you to the table, so keep an eye out for um, follow-up information, and um, mm -hmm. then you'll be able to see kind of the whole grid um, and it changes, you know, from, from year to year. And so I, I believe the information that we posted was um, a, a couple years worth of, of income yeah. levels. Great. Um, um, uh, good, good. And we will also uh, try to follow up with some answers uh, to these some of the questions, too, if we can at least uh, point, point uh, folks to the right place. And as Libby point, pointed out, there's a lot of information on the blocks, too. Um, going to the next question. Thank you, Libby. Appreciate it. Um, most low income, so this came from Samantha Maynard, most low income households might not know about bill assistance resources. How do you educate the community that these exist? Well, uh, like today's session, right, for instance, is one. Uh, there are uh, other avenues too, and I'm going to just uh, have Libby possibly talk about some of the departments that do this uh, work in the city of Cleveland, and we can add more to it too. Yeah, I think it's, you know, it, it's, a, it's a little bit of a, a group effort. So I think um, through what we've done um, with trying to collaborate with, um, with the other organizations as well as their outreach, 
um, you know, hopefully that everyone on the call, if even if you know some of the resources aren't as cool to you, if you know people, you know, we're we're kind of we hope to get some of it out by the word of mouth. Um, like I said, the, the Department of Aging, uh, they they do a lot and and quite a bit of outreach as well. Um, I, I think that the uh, Department of Community Development, they've also done different outreach and, and are able to um, at least point everyone into the right direction. Um, so, you know, th this is kind of it. <laughs> this is, you know, this is an example of, of how we how we get the word out. Um, and a CHN, they do, you know, back in whenever we had in-person events, they do a lot of tabling and, and things like that. Um, so, and, and I think yeah. that the, each individual utility company, um, you know, they have some, you know, they provide some funding for some of these programs. I know CPP, they help mm -hmm. to fund some of the programs. And so even, you know, reaching out to, um, the utility company, they might be able to point you in the in the right direction. I I know that's for a lot of us that's probably the last last resort <laughs> is calling the customer service number of our utility companies. But um you know there's a lot of people and what we've kind of tried to do is aggregate this information in one place. So even if we don't have all the specifics, if it's you know, this is a general phone number and this can get you pointed in the right direction, um we, we hope that you know we can do that at least. Yeah, no, that's that's great, and then we've been try, we've been trying to collate all this, and we will continue to collate uh, almost hopefully act as a one-stop resource for other departments and uh, organizations. And we have also uh, somebody from the sewer district, Marie. I'm going to put you on a spot, and then she had also mentioned that there is a link to the sewer district affordability program. So we, we it like it takes a village, right? So we have a lot of community partners who are helping with various programs in order to get the word out. But I mean, we're not saying we're done. We have a lot more to do. So you are uh, continue if, if you are educated and informed from this, right? We want you to spread the word. If you're active in your community, so that's another way we want you to, you know, spread the word about this. So um, moving to the next question, um, there, there's another very similar question about what are you doing in terms of sensitizing the public on sustainability. This this came from a PhD student in environment and sustainability, uh, far away from the U.S., but enjoyed your presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, uh, we're glad to know we're global. So uh, we, we are doing uh, just very briefly. This is this is one such avenue we're doing this in terms of uh, making people aware. Um, say we always have these um, you know like trifecta: say, learn, and do. Say more, do more, learn more. And so there are various avenues we utilize: uh, monthly presentations, blogs, uh, yeah, e-newsletters. Of course, when we could uh, table events, we were going out in public quite a bit. Hopefully, we can restart that uh, yeah, next year. So it's like there are various things that we're doing. Um, I'm going to move on to the next question in the interest of time and possibly just take one or two more and then wrap it up because, I, like I said, it's a beautiful fall day. We don't want to keep you here any more than we should. So uh, the one other question is, are streetlights still available for residents in Cleveland? Um, I'm going to say yes. It is I mean, still an ongoing process in terms of uh, in installations, if that's what we're getting at. Um, I think with that, we should uh, be cognizant of everybody's time. Uh, we just want to leave our contact information up. And certainly, if we did not address some of the questions, we will certainly follow up. If not, at least amplify some of the responses we provided, um, even though the session is being recorded. Okay. So that's me again, Anand Natarajan, and uh, you, and, and Libby Elizabeth Damon, you have our email address. And um, we want to thank uh, Deepa Vedavyas from our office, uh, who provided in, inputs on and is managing the 100% renewable electricity plan. Uh, by no means a small feat. Uh, thanks once again to the entire Office of Sustainability in the City of Cleveland. And thanks for joining us today. I much appreciated. Anybody else have any last minute thoughts? If not, uh, we'll uh, call it and I'm going to stop recording and we'll ensure we get um, you know, all this information out.